Hello again. Today is November 29th. It's 11:12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I wanted to go over how the establishment determines the ages of stars. I'm not going to read this whole thing out to you, but I will point out that it is quoted as no individual method can provide accurate results for all types of stars. Yeah, they don't think that a star can have its age determined by one method. So they have to use a whole bunch of different methods altogether to determine how old a star is. And here's something I wanted to point out. Luminosity increases on their Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. As you all know, stellar metamorphosis has luminosity decreasing on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram because the star ages and dies. So what happens to a really bright object? Does it pot? Well, with basic thermodynamics, it's supposed to cool and shrink. Um, yeah, I don't know why they completely ignore thermodynamics in this entire stellar age estimation page. It just completely boggles my mind. I think Chemistry Cat goes over why they don't talk about thermodynamics. They have made the first law as them not talking about it. So that's that. Back to this page again. As the star grows older, its luminosity increases at an appreciable rate. I guess for basic physics majors or students of physics or are interested in the stars, they need to understand that if a star is fully formed and it's dying, it's very, very similar to a campfire. A campfire is really big, it's really big and hot, and it cools and dies, and all the fuel is, left, is used up, and the campfire dies. It, it becomes less bright, it dims significantly until it has the ash-covered remains covering the rest of the ambers of the fire. But in astronomy, in astrophysics, they actually they don't care about basic understanding. Once the star is fully formed and hot, it gets hotter. Which is strange because there's nothing to add the heat to the star from outside of it. It's already a fully formed star. So unless they can propose a mechanism to heat the star continually as it ages, after it is fully formed, then basically they are ignoring basic thermodynamics. Here is a much more appropriate version of stellar evolution. As you can see here, the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram just moves down just like this. The star is born really hot and bright, and it dims and cools and shrinks, and its spectrum moves all the way to not being able to be observed because it doesn't have a spectrum anymore. It stops radiating and becomes what astronomers call a planet. So in other words, the age estimation of a star can be determined by radiometric dating. Because check it out, Earth is a black dwarf. All we have to do is pick up some Earth rocks, radiometrically date them, and boom, you have the age of their, you know, I'm not saying it has to be a specific type of rock, I'm just saying we can determine the ages of stars by radiometrically dating them. We don't, we don't have to use the ad hoc methods of, you know, the stellar age estimation where they're like blah 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 this and that model and star clusters or if it has a, has a disk and all this randomness all we have to do is look at it to determine how old it is if it has a spectrum it's young and 
if it in radiates in the infrared, it's middle aged and it's gaseous. If it doesn't have a spectrum anymore, it's made of solid liquid material, it's really old. It's as simple as that.